you, my beloved sisters, both Stacy and Reverend Cheryl. Thank you so very much. And it is great to be with the Las Vegas Center for Spiritual Living community. Give yourselves a pat on the back just for being awesome, just for being the expression of the face of God moving and living and being your awesome selves. So I already started my timer because I, I was told how many minutes I have. And sometimes <laughs> I don't pay attention to the clock. So if we are ready, so those of you who are on Facebook and those who are in the center live and in person, 50 people or less, make sure you pull out a slip of paper because I'm going to have some, some uh, what's it called, homework for you to do a little bit later. But let us begin. So we're talking about this month, this idea of inclusion. Like, what does that mean, inclusion? Like, we know what diversity is. But oftentimes that inclusion piece gets a little sidetracked. And today's thing specifically is better together. You got that, right? So if I ask you to repeat that, better together. But, but see, there's a question right there off the bat, because if I say better together, well, who, who is better together? Wait, wait a minute. And when we say better, well, better than what? And when we say together, well, who's the better that's going to be together to, uh, okay, so, like, we really have to get grounded. Everything in our spiritual philosophy and teaching is very practical. But sometimes we, we you know, we get, we get really heady and we don't bring it down to the lived experience. So, for example, let's say better, better together, better meaning healthier, better meaning more effective, better meaning more actual demonstration of what we're holding in conscience. What does better mean? Better meaning more inclusive, better meaning more demonstration of what oneness is. Like, what does better together really mean? You know, and this idea here in CSL, the vision of CSL, apart from a world that works for all, because we're going to get to that, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to get to that. Uh, this idea of, hold on a second, make sure we get everything plugged in. Hopefully my mic is working a little bit better now. So this idea of awakening humanity to its, to our spiritual magnificence. Well, how do we do that? Like this better together is getting grounded in this idea that when humanity is awakening to its spiritual magnificence, when this is the walk that we are walking, then there's this collective realization that we as a species, we as the face of God, we as the body of God, we as the divine power and presence of all of creation will be able to live, move, and have our beingness as the face of God, as the body of God, as the lived experience of God. Checking my mic again just for some tech issues. As the lived experience of God. Because, see, we talk about God being in us. We talk about God being for us. We talk about God being around us. But keep in mind that that which it is, we are the individualized expressions of it. We are it. So breathe on that and pause. If I ask you a question, I want you to fill in the blank. So turn to somebody near you or your cat or your dog, if you're on Facebook, turn to somebody and answer this question. 2000, this year, 2020, the year 2020, has been a fill in the blank year. 2020, this year, 2020, has been a, a year of isolation, a year of depression, a year of physical distancing, social distancing, a year of social connection in spite of being physically, hmm, what has 2020 afforded us? Because 2020 has shown us that we are better together. 2020 has given us ways 
as a global community, CSL, and others are doing it as well. There are restaurants who are now making it possible for people to get food. There are all kinds of ways that we as a species, we as a global planet, are connecting and demonstrating how we are better together. So we see in practice what this can mean to be better together. But see, we have to shift our focus because if we focus on the lack, the scarcity, the where is me for thus thou not knowest the pains and sufferings of, like if we focus on that, and that's our mental equivalent, then 2020 continues to be a year of doom and gloom and all the other things. And not to you know bypass or downplay the struggles or the, the, the angst and the pain, like not to downplay any of that, but to get really clear on, to get really clear on this idea of when we shift our perception, when we shift our perspective, when we connect with the oneness of who we are as the divine, connect to that which we are as the divine itself, then we see the world from that position. Keep in mind, so for those who may have a former quote unquote Christian background, or you know, you know, you might know, mean something about the about the Judeo-Christian Bible, you know it says. For where there are two or three or more are gathered, that which God is, that which spirit is, is in the midst. That which creation is, is in the midst. Meaning that when we unify, when there is mental equivalent thought, word, and deed, when our mind and our feelings and our actions are the Trinity moving in accord to this, then we demonstrate accordingly. Like, think for a second of, say, a choir. What is it, or, or an orchestra? What is it about a choir or an orchestra that makes it so majestic or so magnificent or so creative? There has to be this thing called unity. Because if everybody in the choir or orchestra sang their own thing, played their own thing, didn't you know pay any attention to the conductor or the choir directress, it would be a cacophony of noise and chaos and stuff. So, but when the sopranos and the altos, when the when the bass and the violinist, when they all play in concert, play in unity, play as one, because they are one choir or they are one orchestra, they are the body of this musical gift. When they act from this place of oneness, then there's music, there's magic. So what happens when we as a collective center, when we as a collective movement, when we as a collective nation, when we as a collective planet move in one accord? So Ernest Holmes created the We Believe Statements, right? And the We Believe Statement number one says, We believe in God, the living spirit almighty. One indestructible, absolute, self-existent cause. This one manifests itself in and through all creation, but is not absorbed by its creation. The manifest universe is the body of God. The manifest universe is the body of God, right? The manifest universe is the body of God. The choir is the body of. The orchestra is the body of. This temple is the body of. When it is working together, then the infinite self-knowingness of God is experienced. The infinite self-knowingness of creation is experienced. Let us keep in mind that Ernest Holmes said, God in me, as me, is me. Breathe that in for a second. God in me, as me, is me. How do we live that as a collective? Ernest Holmes also said that the only God we would truly ever really get to know intimately is the one that we embody. What does it mean for us to embody 
the power and the presence of spirit. You might see a shadow. Tracy's getting ready to come over here and attempt to switch out my microphone. Since we're having a couple of technical difficulties, please talk amongst yourselves for a moment. Let us hope that that is much better. Not sure what happened. Not sure if I'm still there. Hopefully I'm still there. There you go. Okay. So once again, God in me as me is me, Ernest Holmes. And Ernest Holmes also said, the only God we would know is the one that we embody. Some of you, uh, practitioner Lauren, you probably know, and I know Stacy and Cheryl, I know y'all know, uh, Charlie Shepard, practitioner extraordinaire. Charlie often says, you are God. He said he's going to make it like a bumper sticker of it. You are God. Act like it. What would happen if everyone in our beloved communities took that to heart? Like, breathe that in. What would it mean to embody, to greet people, to live, move, and have our beingness knowing that that which we are is God? You know, when, when, for our body temple, when we have a shoulder thing, like, oh, my shoulder hurting, it's like, oh, and it's not working in unity, then there's discord, there's pain, there's discomfort. But when physical therapy works with me and acupuncture and Reiki and prayer, and, you know, we get it good again, and it's like, oh, full range of motion. I got this. When we as a spiritual community, when we as a spiritual movement lead or at the cutting edge and at the leading edge of planetary consciousness by embodying, knowing God in me as me is me, knowing and recognizing that that which it is I am embodying and knowing that there is nothing other than it. So that every person I meet, I know I'm meeting God. Namaste. That which it is sees and recognizes itself in through and as you. Perfectly. See, we often get get things a little, you know, because we take things personal. We take things and make them about us. I, 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 me, 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 rather than turning the me into a we. Because there is no we if, like, if I leave, then who's the we? It's just me by myself. But the moment there are two of us, the I and the I become a we. And when we anchor in prayer, when we work together, when we synergize, when we cooperate, and when we communicate, things change. But part of this thing of being better together is the individual work. What work am I doing so that I'm not othering? What work am I doing so I see the divine in, through, and as? Because there's, there's no world that works for all if I can't get my world to work for me. Follow me with that? If, if my life doesn't work, my relationships don't work, like in my personal life, then how do I expect my relationship with my beloved sister, Cheryl, or Stace, like how do I expect that relationship to work? I can't get my stuff together. So if I can't get my stuff together, then I'm always been looking at them like, what y'all doing? Why are y'all always doing blah, 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 blah? And I'm going to judge and criticize. I'm going to do, I'm going to project where my consciousness is coming from. So first, I need to come together. And where am I better together? Meaning all of the aspects, all of the parts of me are being included in how I show up. Not vilifying the ego and invite it in. I'm open at the top and the bottom. I invite the darkness and the light, yin and yang. I'm bringing it all into presence so that I can move, shift, and heal what needs to be healed in me. Because I am a multidimensional being. I have various parts. And if I'm not demonstrating what it means to be better together, then how am I expecting somebody else to? I'm expecting you to do the work for me. I'm expecting you to create a world that works for all. Like I'm saying, so Patty and Dave, uh, can y'all do some work for me? I need y'all to write a song about the world that works for all. I don't feel like doing nothing. Like I'm like, 
Yvonne, you can make some, you know, the do the techie stuff, because y'all need to make this world worse for all, because I'm going to go take a nap, and when I come back, I need things to be together. That's not community. I don't know what that is, but that's not community. Community is when we commune, when we come together as one body. Ralph Waldo Triune says, the person who includes, the person who includes, not excludes, but the person who includes, loves all the world. And in their larger love for all the world, they find themselves included. So when I do the work, when I bring love into the mix, then I find myself already in the mix. See, when I exclude, then I'm pushing out and I find myself outside. But when I pull in, then I am closer in as well. So the, the question is, are we ready to love? We have a whole bunch of phrases that talk about this idea of togetherness, such as united we stand, finish the sentence, united we stand, divided we fall. We have another one, uh, it's, it's the unofficial motto of Sweden, but you'll know it from these gentlemen known as the Three Musketeers. All for one, and one for all. And there, there's more. There's no I in team. My sister Tracy often reminds me, there's no I in team when we're working out, because I'll go do something. She's like, there's no I in team. We're supposed to be working out together. And then, then another one from the Judeo-Christian Bible, if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And there are many, many others. So in the, the mass consciousness even, because none of these are specifically new thought phrases. Ernest Holmes didn't write these, but they're concepts that we have deeply embedded because we, at a cellular level, at a deeply spiritual level, understand that we are better together. We, the individualized expressions of the one, because there's only one, there's only one mind, that mind is God. There's only one life, that life is God. And so each one of us, in the body of this which is, this transcendent being, power, presence, love, joy, and when I say being, I'm not talking about somebody sitting on a cloud, I'm talking about being as in beingness, that which is being what it is. God being an apple, God being a tree, God being Reverend Cheryl, God being, that's when I say being, that's what I mean. So I, just don't, I don't want y'all to write uh, Reverend Stacy, Reverend Cheryl, talking about, he was talking about God as a being and God's not. Just clarify. So we breathe. So when we understand this idea, oneness, unity, inclusion, then we bump it up and understand, so I'm sure you heard the phrase, Hurt people, hurt people. Hurt people, hurt people. Well, if that's the case, then we also know that healed people heal people. And people who are whole, recognizing that the word holy comes from the concept of whole. So when we are whole, when we are one, when we are unified and con connected deeply, then there is a shift. There's an evolutionary shift. And that thing that we call mass consciousness, race consciousness, whatever we're calling it, we then tip the scales so that that thing that's there is no longer there the way it is right now. See, people talk about war. Well, war has always been. There's always been war. There will <coughs> always be war. That's that's not principle. That's precedent. Just because it was doesn't mean it always will be. Doesn't mean it needs to be now. There was a time when I should have been in shackles and chains, and if I tried to run away, hung in a tree. That's not, that's not principle. Change that. Emancipation, freedom, justice, equity. Principle said, uh, you're a woman, you're not allowed to vote. Precedent said, sorry, precedent said that was the way things are. But principle said, no, 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 no. Pause, pause, bro. Hold on, pump your brakes. Women are equal, and so, yes, they are afforded the right to vote. 
Okay, so let's look around and find where are we basing our lives currently right here, right now, based on precedent, not on principle. We are better together when we anchor and ground in this idea of what is spiritual principle, then things shift and change. Keep in mind, uh, there's a book called The Principle of Oneness, and it says, choose to love every facet of yourself unconditionally. Choose to love every facet of yourself unconditionally. See, once again, this idea of inclusion, inclusivity happens when I can love me, then I, there's a song, I don't remember who wrote it, it says, I love myself so much, I love myself so much, so that I can love you so much, so that you can love you so much, then you can start loving me. Reciprocity, reciprocity, the law of circulation, when I sow the seeds of love in, through, and as myself, then I see the harvest. And once again, when I love inclusively, I find that I am included. When I love me to such a degree that I love you, to such a degree that you now love you, to such a degree that now you can love me, because that is the truth of our being, because that is what principle calls into being, then we recognize that wherever I go, wherever you go, God goes. Whatever, whoever you meet, whoever you are conversing with, you are having a conversation with God. You and the divine are intimately interwoven as one divine tapestry in that conversation. There is no other. You know, uh, I reminded someone at one time because they were like, you know, the Bible says, you know, Cain and Abel, am I my brother's keeper? And I said, keep in mind, no. I am not my brother's keeper. I am not my sister's keeper. I am my brother and I am my sister. There is only one. And even beyond duality, I am my non-gender conforming, gender rich sibling. I am and they are me. We are all one. How do we get to start including? Because ultimately the idea of inclusive, being inclusive is getting beyond just being an open and welcoming community. Just being an open and welcoming movement. It's how do we become open, welcoming, inclusive, honoring, affirming, and celebratory. How do we celebrate and honor our unique, divine differences? Not that they are bad because it's God. God showing up as this brown skin. African-American man, God showing up in, through, and as each and every form of, when I say the word apple, we think of, a, oh, there's an apple, but do you recognize and realize that there are like 16, 17 different types of apples? If God can show up as 17 or more types of apples, and we celebrate it, because we're like, that's perfect for apple cider, that's perfect for apple pie, that's perfect for apple tots, this is perfect to just eat it raw, like this is apple, 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 apple butter, apple sauce, apple, apple, apple. We celebrate their, their uniqueness and their differences because one is sweeter, one is more bitter, one is. But when it comes to us, when it comes to people, now we want to criticize. Let's keep in mind, Ernest Holmes says, if our human relations are to mean the most to us, we must sense that there is hidden within, around, and through each of us a divine presence manifesting itself in infinite variations, the same impulse, the same love and life, but never quite alike in any two persons. Never quite alike in any two persons, but no less God. So let's pause and breathe, because now comes the time for your homework. So I, this call to action is your opportunity to think about, to journal, to have conversation. And what I would like you to do is begin to consider how important representation is for any person. For example, if you identify, can you identify five television shows, movies where a person of color, be they black, Latinx, indigenous American, etc., Asian, is the majority of the cast. And it's not shown in a stereotypical representation, but it is some way that honors and celebrates them. Because representation matters. Can you contemplate and define for yourself the similarities and differences between being welcoming, as I said, welcoming, welcoming and inclusive, welcoming, inclusive and affirming, and have conversation if you are willing. 
have conversation with people around this. And then lastly, journal about what it means for you to be any of these things. What does it mean for you and for someone else to be a particular color? What does it mean for you and others to be their specific gender or gender expression? What does it mean for you and this person to be the ethnicity, etc.? And I'm sure this slide can be made uh, available to you so that you can actually sit with this and have conversation and move through this. And so as we breathe in this moment, I want us to simply anchor in as we get ready to have prayer. And so as I always say, let's simply anchor in this moment by recognizing this breath, breathe, inhale and exhale. And in this breath, there is no trying to control it or micromanage it. There is no trying to breathe the breath for tomorrow or trying to hold the breath from yesterday and pull it into today. We simply breathe this breath right here, right now. And in breathing in this breath right here, right now, this is a demonstration of surrender and a demonstration of what it means to be present. And so from this demonstration of surrendering and presence, I recognize that our bodies are intelligent enough to breathe themselves, but ultimately this breath is God breathing itself. And so I recognize and speak what I know, that which God is, is all there is. A circle whose circumference is nowhere, whose center is everywhere, therefore the very center of God is right where I am. And because God is all there is, what is true for me is true for everyone joining in the sanctuary, joining via Facebook, joining presently live right now, or joining at another time in space that is the next now moment. For this eternal now is all there is. And so I recognize that God in all of its infinite and divine diverse ways of expressing God includes all of it within itself. And so I embrace all of the inclusive ways of how God is showing up as me. I include all of the diverse and inclusive ways and welcoming and affirming ways that God is showing up in through and as all of creation. I celebrate and I honor knowing that as I give, I receive. The law of circulation is about far more than money. I give love and receive love. I give honor and I receive honor. I give joy and I receive joy. And so I anchor knowing that this moment right now, the embodiment of God is what I am open and allowing to move in through and as me, knowing that my thoughts are God's thoughts. My words are God's words. My emotions are how God is feeling itself as me. And how I choose to move and walk the walk is how God is serving itself here on planet earth. And I'm grateful for this and surrender this into the law. The law that says yes, the law that said yes before time was a thing, the law that will continue to say yes for all of the infinitude of eternity. Yes, yes, and yes. The law right now saying yes to this prayer of God speaking in, through, and as itself, back into itself. Therefore, I know that this prayer already in the mind of God, because there is only that one mind, already existing, fully formed, and fully functioning in the mind of God. Therefore, it already exists. And knowing it already exists, I know it is already done. And because it is done, I and this beloved community anchor and declare this truth by saying together, and so it is. And so it is. We have come into a time where change is inevitable. And as the world we live in changes around us, there is a place that nurtures you with compassion, love, and brings out your inner strength. At the Las Vegas Center for Spiritual Living, we work to create a world that works for everyone. By sharing both personal and spiritual tools, we can help you navigate through and create a life you love. If mindfulness, prosperity, abundance, and peace are on your list of what you're looking for, come join us and be part of something wonderful. Wherever you are in your spiritual path, you are always welcome here. Join us in person or as live stream on Facebook each Sunday. For more information, visit us at www.lasvegascsl.org.